In this video, I'm going to show you how to bleed Shimano hydraulic road brakes. These are the brakes that are used on road bikes and cyclocross bikes, and they're fairly new from Shimano. If you're familiar with mountain biking, and you've been mountain biking for a while, you may have come across bleeding your mountain bike brakes. However, if you don't mountain bike, um, and you have a, a road bike or a cyclocross bike with Shimano hydraulic brakes now, um, this is something that may be unfamiliar to you. The process is not that hard. In fact, if you can pour liquid through a funnel and you can turn a few screws, uh, you can do this job. There are two methods of introducing hydraulic fluid into Shimano brakes. One is to do it from the top with just the funnel. The other way is to push it up through the bottom with a syringe into the funnel. I found that using just the funnel from the top is a little bit easier and a little bit less complex. So that's the method I'm gonna show in this video. Let me first show you what you're going to need to do this job. You're going to need probably a 5 millimeter Allen wrench, a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench. You will need a small flat blade screwdriver. You'll need an open-ended 7 millimeter wrench. You're going to need some Shimano brake fluid. This is typically the way it comes when you purchase it from your bike shop and by the way this is mineral oil it's not DOT fluid so you don't have to worry about it corroding your paint or damage damaging any part of your bike if it gets on it which is very nice I like uh, using Shimano brakes partly for that reason you'll also need um, a little plastic tube to put on the bleed nipple and you will probably want to put a plastic bag on the end with a rubber band you're going to need this funnel. This is very inexpensive. It's only probably five, six, seven bucks at your bike shop. Um, and you will need this for this job. You're going to either need a bleed block like this or a spacer to put in the pads. And when you do this, I recommend removing the pads because if you get any brake fluid on the pads, it will most likely render them useless and you would need to replace them so it's worth taking an extra minute and removing the pads and using the bleed block if you did not want to use the, remove the pads or you had an old set of pads you were using you would use a spacer like this one the first thing that we're going to need to do is just remove this plastic cover and this is done by removing just this little screw back here that uses a flat blade screwdriver. So I'm just going to remove that screw first. Okay, I have that little screw removed and I didn't show it, but I used a little pick just to pull it out so I wouldn't have to tip the bike over because it's you got to fish it out of there. And, I'll, and I also didn't show you've got to peel um, this rubber housing back before you start this. Now that you have that removed, you just kind of reach under here and pop up that cover. So I did that from the bottom and you just pop that out. Okay, next we're going to turn this screw. This is the adjustment screw to bring the lever closer or further from the bar. And you want to turn this all the way clockwise. And as you turn it, you're going to see the lever come out. And when these are new, it's about a half a turn. And so I've turned that. And we just want the lever all the way from the bar when we do this. And I have a towel back here just to make the background less busy. This is not something that you need. Now we're going to remove the pads. And to do this, most likely you're going to have this little cotter pin, and you just pull that off, and then take uh, either a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench, or this one actually has a screwdriver. If it's a mountain bike, you're going to have a, an Allen wrench, but this one I'm going to use a screwdriver. So I'm just going to carefully take a flat blade screwdriver and remove this retaining bolt and never touch the surface of a brake pad with your fingers. You've got oil on your fingers and you do not want to get skin oil on the uh, surface of the pads. So I'm going to take those brake pads out and I'll set them aside on a clean surface. Okay, I am doing the front brake for this demonstration and it's important to have the brake caliper hanging down as low as you can get it. So, if you're doing the rear, it's at this point that you would actually undo these 5 millimeter Allen bolts, take them aside, make sure you look at the way these spacers are stacked, and let the brake just hang down. You've got to let it hang down um, to use gravity to get 
the hydraulic fluid through the lines. But for the front brake, I'm just going to leave it on the bike because it's already hanging down. Then you would put your bleed block into the brake. Now that's kind of hard to do if the brake is on the bike um, because you've got this um, bracket here and so uh, after you've gotten the rear off you would put this up through the bottom and then put the little retaining bolt just to hold it in place. The front you can actually just lay it right there and it'll just sit there so I don't have to uh, actually install it. It's already um, inside the caliper and the uh, pads or the pistons are able to hit it. So I can just lay this in there. You just got to have something in there because you never want to squeeze a brake lever without anything inside to grab the pistons. If you do, the pistons can come all the way out and that would uh, require you to disassemble the caliper to put them back in. So always have either um, the pads with that um, red spacer that I showed you or a wheel or um, if the pads are out, this yellow bleed block. This is your bleed port on the Shimano hydraulic road brakes. And I've rotated the bike up in the stand to kind of level this out a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfectly level, but this is where we're going to attach our funnel. So I'm going to take my 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench and just take out this um, bleed port screw. So again, 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench, and we're just going to remove this bleed port screw, and it's not threaded in there very far, so be careful it doesn't fall out. And we're just going to set that aside. Okay, now I'm going to attach the funnel. And these funnels have a little plunger in here so that you can put fluid in and the fluid doesn't come out until you're ready. So we're going to put the funnel, we're just going to screw it in, and like I said, this doesn't thread in very far, so sometimes it takes getting it perfectly lined up and you may have to hold that rubber cover back and I've got the funnel inside. Now I'm going to take the brake fluid and fill up the funnel about halfway. Any fluid that you don't use you can just put back in the bottle when you're done. Again it's really nice with this plunger because it uh, makes it a lot easier. So. Still got the plunger in, and I've got the funnel filled up about halfway with brake fluid. Okay, down at the caliper end, you've got this little cover on your bleed port, it's a little rubber cover. It's on the top of the caliper, and just kind of get your fingernails under there and pop it out. And it's got a little holder, so it won't come all the way off the caliper. Now we're going to hook up our tube, and this is just so the brake fluid can go somewhere and not go on the ground. Now that we have the tube hooked up to the bleed nipple at the caliper, it's time to come back up to the lever and just pull out the plunger from the hole in the funnel. And you can either just kind of lay it aside so it doesn't block the hole inside the funnel, or I typically will just completely take it out just to make sure the flow is not interrupted. We're just going to take our open-ended 7 millimeter wrench and turn this, and it won't be too tight. But pay attention to how tight it is so that you know how to tighten it back up when you're done. You're going to see brake fluid come into this tube. And you can regulate how fast it comes in by turning the screw. So if, it, if you need to take a break, um, and you can just close it. But I'm going to open it up. And keep an eye on the plunger. Make sure the fluid doesn't get too low because you don't want to get air inside the system. So not very much. And I'm going to close the, um, close the uh, screw here, and that will close it off. And then you can actually reach up to the lever and squeeze the lever and see if it's firm. And it should be pretty firm at this point. The last thing that we're going to do before we finish up is we're going to squeeze the lever. And you can't see it in the video, but I'm squeezing the lever. And I'm going to open this back up. And then with the lever still down, close it. Okay, don't let up on the lever until you close this off. Give the lever a couple squeezes and do this one or two more times. So I'm squeezing the lever. I'm turning this screw. You'll feel the lever go all the way down to the bar. Keep the lever down. Tighten it up. Let the lever up. Give it a couple pumps. I'm going to do this one last time. So I'm squeezing the lever. 
You, again, you'll feel it go all the way down to the bar. Okay, I'm going to close this back off and give the lever a couple pumps. And that's all there is to bleeding the brakes for Shimano hydraulic brakes. So I'm going to make sure this is pretty tight. Okay, I'm going to remove the tube. And I'm going to close the little rubber cover here. Okay, now up at the funnel, put your plunger back in before you unscrew this, because if you don't, all your fluid is going to come out. It's not the end of the world if it does, but you want to be as neat as possible. Okay. So I've got this, and I'm just going to dump this back into the bottle by putting it over the bottle and taking out the plunger and reusing this because this is clean, fresh fluid. Before you put the screw back in the bleed port, make sure that you can see the mineral oil come all the way up to the top. If not, just take your bottle of mineral oil and add a drop or two to make sure it comes all the way up to the top. It's okay if you get a little bit of spillage when you put the screw back in. Okay, now we're going to put our bleed port screw back in. And snug it up with your 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench. And this does not have to be crazy tight. It's got an O-ring in there. Um, so just get it nice and snug. Probably about three newton meters on that. Now if you don't like your levers all the way out from the bar, which I don't, I'm just going to turn this screw and bring the lever back in a little bit. I'm just going to go half a turn. That brings it in quite a bit. And again, that's the way they come new. Now we're going to put the cover back on. And to do so, I'm going to hold back that rubber, um, rubber cover and put it on from the top. So let it grab onto the top and then push down on the bottom. And that will snap back into place. Don't force it. If, um, if it's not going on um, too easily, you need to just make sure everything's lined up correctly. Okay. And that will snap back into place and I'm going to replace the screw on the top that holds the cover in place. So we'll just drop this little cover screw back in the top. Let it kind of fall down in there and then just tighten it up with your flat blade screwdriver. And this is another screw that does not need to be all that tight. Snug it up. Now I recommend highly taking a paper towel and some isopropyl alcohol. Douse the paper towel and wipe everything down really good. And before you do this, I actually recommend just going in and washing your hands real good. Um, again, the Shimano mineral oil is not corrosive, but it will destroy your brake pads. It just makes the brake pads slippery and not um, useful. And up here at the lever, you know, you want to make sure there's no oil on the, uh, on the grip surface that you're trying to grip when you ride. So wipe everything down really good on both the lever and the caliper. Okay, so I'm going to wipe down the caliper too and do this before you put the brake pads back in. And then go wash your hands one more time before you actually install your brake pads. Okay, and the final step is just to drop your brake pads back in there. Make sure you've got your spring in there. Okay, there is a little spring inside the brake pads. So that's three pieces, the two pads and the spring. Drop it back in there. Line up the, uh, the holes for the bolt. Just gonna put the bolt back in there. Snug it up with a screwdriver. Again, another part that does not have to be crazy tight. Just snug it up with your flat blade screwdriver. Don't forget your little pin that needs to go on the side. And that will hold it in place just in case that bolt were to ever come loose. And actually the very final step is to just put your rubber cover back in. And it's got two little plugs on each side. You just got to kind of work it 
into the lever and just they've got some little flanges on it so sometimes you have to put those in sideways and just get your rubber cover back on and you're good to go so that's pretty much all there is to bleeding the road bike Shimano hydraulic brakes it's something that you need to do when you get a new set of brakes obviously because you've got to cut the lines to either put them inside the frame or adjust them to the right size for your frame and I do have another video that shows you how to cut hydraulic lines and reinstall them the road bike ones are a little bit different because you actually do it from the middle of the line rather than up at the lever but the concept is the same this is also something that you need to do if your braking performance degrades so if your levers start to feel spongy you've got some air in the lines and you need to do this bleed process to get the air out so good luck with your brake bleeding and thanks for watching